Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to do something a little bit different and as you can see I'm outside and not at my desk and the reasons for that is because I'm going to take part in a five day challenge where I'm going to show you guys this macro lens and I think everybody should own a macro lens because it can make the boring and mundane actually pretty exciting. So over the next few days I'm going to keep coming out and taking you guys along with me and you're going to learn macro at the same time I do. Macro isn't something I do that often so I'm probably going to learn things as we go. So let's get cracking with day one. We've got some pretty decent weather and it seems like a pretty good day to get started with some macro photography. Okay then, so I think two things stand out already. One of them is obviously making use of the self-timer, which is pretty obvious because if you're using a tripod, then why wouldn't you? Helps reduce all of that shake. The second thing was for the first time, I've actually found myself turning on all of the autofocus points because I found trying to position the autofocus patch onto certain parts of these daffodils was actually a bit of a pain. So I had to turn on the, I think it's 425 points instead of the 100 and something. So that's two takeaways so far. I thought composing might be quite easy at the end of the day just point it at things and you'll be done but I feel like especially with something like this where these daffodils are starting to go over there's a lot of value in spending some time finding the right flower like one that actually looks nice and then working out your composition I was just initially chucking it in front of flowers and taking pictures but I think the more you think about it the better your pictures look which makes a lot of sense when you think about it So I think another thing that's standing out for me is the fact that there's the track there. I normally walk straight up there and give this area behind me here with the daffodils almost no attention at all. I've been here for nearly 45 minutes now and I've taken lots of images I'm happy with and importantly, and this is something that's underrated in photography, I'm having a lot of fun. And the macro lens I'm using is the Fuji 30mm macro lens. It's a new lens and I'm going to be doing a review on it. And you don't need to go this expensive with lenses. You can also just buy macro tubes and convert your existing lenses to have the fun I'm having now. But I'm genuinely having a great time and I'm looking forward to getting these images on the computer and having a look at them. Hi guys and welcome back then. It's day two and I think the main takeaways from day one were one, I had a great time and two, was that even at shooting an F8, the depth of field on some of those images was tiny. So this morning I brushed up on my focus stacking skills. I kind of forgotten how to do it. So I watched a couple of YouTube tutorials and did this photo of my Leica just to make sure I remembered how to do it. So today the main aim is gonna to be to try out some focus stacking and we were here yesterday and you can already see that the weather is so different from yesterday. We had nice bright sunny weather and today we've got rain. But for once, I'm actually quite excited about the fact we've got rain because I wanna do some kind of raindrop photography. So that's gonna be the aim of today. Raindrops and focus stacking. So let's see how we get on with our walk on day two. So if you're not too sure what focus stacking is, I'm actually cheating a little bit and I'm letting the camera do the hard work by setting an in and an out point where it's gonna start focusing and finish focusing and the camera then fills in the gap with how many photos it thinks you need based on your f-stop to cover every single part of the image in focus. I then take these images, I'm gonna go process them in Photoshop. I do like an auto align and then I do a photo merge and it will then just pick out the best photos based on what's in focus. So that's what we're doing. Now, there's a couple things of it. Now, first of all, it means your camera has to take lots of photos in quick succession. So what I've done is I've turned off my RAW and JPEG to just RAW so that the camera shoots the photos quicker. The other thing is I've come a little bit deeper into the woods because if your image moves too much, it just won't work. So where I was before, it was quite windy and things like the grass was just moving too much so that when it was taking them really quick photos the photo was just too different that it will struggle to merge later on so I've come a little bit deeper into the woods now so the wind shouldn't affect me too much and we're going to try some other stuff down in here now So one mistake that I've definitely made today, and it's a little bit annoying, is the fact I forgot to bring the lens hood for the macro lens. So water keeps getting on that front element and I have to keep on drying it. And again, this is an area that I would typically walk past every day and spend no time here at all. This is my lunch break and I've already spent 45 minutes here, so I've actually got to rush back now. Tomorrow I'll update you on how I actually feel about the actual process of doing the focus stacking in post, because when you're actually doing it out in the field, it's not too bad. But I do worry later on, I'm gonna spend quite a lot of time sat on my laptop. So I'll update you tomorrow when we get on to day three. Hi 
Hi guys and welcome back to day three. Now I did say yesterday I'd give you a bit of an update in terms of how the focus stacking went and I think the main takeaway was the fact that each picture in post-processing took me about 15 minutes to do but that is on one of the best MacBooks you can buy. If you had a slower computer I think it would take a lot longer. It wasn't really the time element, it was actually the results. You'd have seen some of the images yesterday but if you look closely, especially around the edges of what you'd expect to be sharp, it's blurry and I think that's just where the auto blend has got a little bit confused. So if you were to actually take these and make a print, I think you'd end up having to do a quite a lot of manual adjustment, which is something that I've not done and I don't plan on doing, but for the specific ones you planned on printing, then I think you probably would. Now today we're actually gonna do something completely different again, and I'm super excited about it because it's another element of photography that I am rubbish at, and that is flash photography. So we're actually gonna go with no tripod today. I've just got the X-T5, a really cheap Yongnuo flash that's manual, it's not got TTL, so I've gotta shoot it myself. And I'm gonna hand hold the lot, and I'm gonna show you some of the images. One of the really big advantages of using the flash is the fact that I don't really need to bring the tripod with me because I can use the flash to fire at the subject and freeze it dead still. So this is why I've been able to use the flash and not have to bring a tripod with me today, which I think is adding a little bit more flexibility and maybe adding a little bit to my enjoyment today because I'm somebody that doesn't really like using tripods and I've been using a tripod, the little like gorilla one over the last couple of days and I just find it a little bit frustrating sometimes. So being able to go handheld today has actually been a lot of fun. Now another thing to add as well is there's two different methods to expose. So one method is pretty standard. I expose for the environment like I have been for the rest of this week and I then just use the flash to like fill in some of the shadows a little bit, like your typical kind of portrait flash. The alternative is I set my camera to settings that are really good for macro photography, like I don't know, f11, ISO 125, and a shutter speed of maybe 125th of a second. And if I was to take that picture right now, it'd be completely black, it'd be completely dark. But I then use the flash to light up the subject. So what you end up with, as long as there's a decent amount of separation between your subject and the background, is a completely black background and your subject nicely lit. So I'm playing around with those two different methods today, just seeing what these images come out like. Hi guys and welcome back to day four. Now, reflecting on day three quickly with the flash photography, I really like the flexibility that that offered me, being able to hand hold and not need a tripod. The downside from yesterday, other than it being rained off and it being pretty short, was the fact that I was using too much flash. I feel like it was just a little bit too overpowering in the images. So today what we're gonna do is continue with the flash, but we're also going to kind of push this whole macro, opens up this whole world of photography that you don't realize by only taking pictures in my garden today. We're not gonna venture out on a big long walk, we're gonna just use everything I've got here. So today's video is gonna be flash photography in the confines of just my garden. I think the thing that I'm starting to notice with macro photography that is super hard is composition. I think I've come at this so far the wrong way. I've been trying to get as close to stuff as I can to really accentuate those macro details and composition has just kind of fallen off to the wayside a little bit. And I think composition ends up being the hardest thing to get right in macro photography. Partly because your subjects are so small, trying to frame things up can actually be really hard and sometimes if something's on the edge of the frame and you don't want it, the movement you need to make with the camera is like one millimeter and then you can easily knock your camera and just completely mess up what you were thinking. So I think composition's been the thing on macro photography so far that stood out the most, that is the hardest aspect that I wasn't really expecting. So I think that probably brings us to the end of day four and this macro challenge. I think the two takeaways from today, are first of all, I've got a lot better with the flash and having a bit more of a subtle use of the flash to just fill your subject with a bit of light and maybe freeze it a little bit is far better than the overpowering flash that I was getting yesterday on day three. And the other thing is that I've taken one of my favorite pictures of the year, meters from my own house. And that's all because of this macro lens and I just wouldn't have been able to do it without it. So I think tomorrow is gonna to be our final day. So I'll see you on day five. So guys, it's absolutely chucking it down outside today and I've decided that rather than go out and shoot on day five, that maybe we'll just do a bit of a recap instead. Now, I think looking back at the images I took over the last week, 
Oddly, my best photo might have been the one I took on the first day of this bee. This is probably the photo I like the most, and I think part of the reason why my first day ended up resulting in the best photos, other than the good weather, was the fact that I was looking for nothing other than good photos. I wasn't trying to learn any new technique, I was just going out and looking for a good image. In the day two, three, and four, I was spending an awful lot of time learning new techniques, and even though it didn't result in, I think, my best image, I still learn an awful lot and I think it's very easy in photography to look back at days where you didn't get a good photo and think they were a waste of time but if you were learning something or you had a good time that is definitely not the case. I think it's very likely that this video is going to be titled something along the lines of why everyone should have a macro lens and you don't necessarily need a macro lens you could just go out and buy some macro kind of extender tubes as well and convert your current lenses but having a macro option opens up this whole new world. I wouldn't have believed at the start of this week if you told me that one of my favourite photos from the year was going to be taken just outside my house in a hedge. But I absolutely love this image of this ladybird and I think it might be one of my favourite photos of the year. And having this macro lens has also pushed me to learn new things. I've learned focus stacking, I've dusted off a flash that I've not used for 10 years and also learned how to combine that with my Fuji as well using a Nikon cable. So overall, just having this different lens and different options has led to me learning an awful lot and taking some really good images. And it's a really good way as well if you're losing a little bit of inspiration maybe, you're struggling to find new things to shoot, a macro really might be the answer. If you're interested in the macro lens that I've been using this week, I will be doing a full review on it. It's the new Fuji 30mm f2.8. So a review of that will be coming in the very near future. But if you've enjoyed this video, it's been a little bit different. So I'd be really interested to know if you did enjoy this video or whether I should just go back to talking at my desk. Thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.